The price increases right now we're seeing are due to the reopening. Uh, and the rapid growth we see is because people are finally getting to normalize their lives again and going back to spending. And they have a lot of savings that they, uh, by not spending over the last year. And they wanted to say, let me get on with life. So everyone wants to do the same thing at the same time. They want to buy a new car. They want to go to get an airplane ticket. And the supply constraints are pushing up prices. Inflation has a huge political consequence. And one of the reasons central bankers are so afraid of inflation is because it hits the poor the hardest. Mm -hmm. And the corrosive kind of inflation we had in the 60s and 70s are just a, 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 the prime example of where poor people are hurt the most. So the Fed is doing its best to try to contain inflation, but the price increases, the price pops that are associated with supply-side bottlenecks is not the sort of inflation that we were, had in the 70s, and we shouldn't mix the two. Yes, a lot of people are suffering because food prices, energy prices, gasoline prices, and housing prices new house prices are going skyrocketing. But poor people are not buying new houses. They are eating, and that's where the problem comes from, is that the temporary bout of it, price increases in food and, and, um, and basic necessities like gasoline are, are hurting people the most, and a temporary bout of, of extra spending to make up for income uh, to buy these extra, uh, more expensive goods and services would be a, a right thing to do, but it's a temporary thing. Once the supply conditions come back online again, once the farmers get back into work, once the supply from uh, lumber from Canada starts to come back again, we'll see prices normalize and the rate of inflation will actually come back to 2%. In fact, the Fed had a problem of keeping inflation up above 2% because productivity and the quality, of, uh, high quality of new goods and services being produced kept prices going from going up and, in fact, had some deep disinflationary factors pushing prices down.